Wake your ass up. The Breakfast Club is on. Wake up. The Breakfast Club, Envy, and Charlemagne, the voice of the culture. You think I'm coming here when this shit ain't hot? See, y'all are different. Y'all are the culture. It's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all know what y'all talking about. This is probably becoming the most prominent form for hip hop. Being here next to all of you guys, it's really big. Put it in, pers- put it in perspective. The, the Breakfast Club, bitches. Wake up. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 Charlemagne the guy. Peace to the planet. It is Tuesday. Yes, it's Tuesday. What's happening? How y'all feel out there? Why everybody get so quiet, man? I feel great. I am blessed, black, and highly favored, man. Yes. How y'all feeling, man? Beautiful morning. Any anytime you wake up, beautiful morning. Another beautiful day morning, to serve, man. Morning. God is good. Absolutely. God is good, man. God is good. Wake up this morning uh, and give thank God for it all. Gratitude right. should be your attitude. What's happening? Absolutely. Now, it's Monday. No, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Yes. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling I'm, I'm feeling all right, man. So can I can I salute Jess Hilarious? Salute to Jess Hilarious. She is the third co-host of The Breakfast Club. Yeah, if you didn't hear yesterday, we announced it uh, on social media once we got off the air. That's right. Yeah, so she is uh, officially the third co-host of The Breakfast Club, and she starts next Monday. Next damn Monday it. she starts, So that yes. just means that we don't have to do rumor report no more. Hey, All man, drop a bomb for God. that. Yeah, drop a bomb Jess for with that. the mess will be here. Yes. Okay? And what I mean when I say Jess with the mess will be here, not that Jess has the mess. Jess does have the mess, and her news is real. That will be rumor report. That's right. Yes. Yes, and so, she starts on Monday. Yes, next Monday. That's right. Super duper exciting. Congratulations to Jess. Well mm-hmm. deserved. Well deserved. Earned. Boy, well earned. Earned. And deserved, yes. Earned, not given. Earned. That's right. All right. What you do yesterday? Anything? Uh, Yesterday, I worked out yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, I, You know, I'm working on my third book. Mm-hmm. So my third book is on the way. So that's been uh, consuming a lot of my time outside of like you know uh, other business endeavors but majority of my time is yeah working on working on my third book which is which is coming sooner than you think that's right okay yeah, yeah we just uh, wrapped up uh, my second book uh, Real Life Real Family where we talk about raising our six kids uh, and you know I got one 22 one just turned 20 I got a 10 a 9 a 7 and a 2 year old so we talk about the differences and the errors how things have changed you know because when I was raising my 22 year old when she was a child things change you don't do things differently you learn from either mistakes or you learn to do things differently so we talk about all of that so I'm excited for that that should come hopefully uh, this year so super duper excited for that yeah, right. but I kept it light yesterday on a, on, on a Monday mm. and I'm tired this morning for some reason I don't know why and you know, it's weird because you wake up on Monday Yesterday I had mad energy, and then it's Tuesday, and Tuesday feel like how Monday's supposed to feel. Now you wake up on Mondays mm-hmm. sometime, and you. But well, Monday, feel well, tired. Yesterday, yesterday we knew the announcement was going out, so we were all excited. That's, oh, that's why not, my, that, I wasn't. That wasn't my that no. Oh, I was excited. That was no. I had a lot of energy. I was that excited. Was, I didn't have no energy for that. Oh, I was excited. I, 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 I knew I, I've been felt that forever. Nah, that was excited. <laughs> to, I mean, me too. But, knew, but announcing to the world, was like do. that was excitement to me. Nah, to announce it, it was. I knew what that was going to do. It we was. had some fun with that one over the we last did. few weeks. Yes, Lord, we sure mercy. did. Oh. Yes, we did. Oh, man. All right. Well, let's get the show cracking. We got front page news next. We'll tell you what's going on. Teslin Figaro will be joining us. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, some quick sports. Ben Simmons has returned after missing 38 games. Who uh, cares? Yesterday, he uh, <laughs> played in 18 minutes. He had 10.8 rebounds, 11 assists, no turnovers. Uh, 10 points, 8 rebounds, 11 assists. Well, congratulations to Ben Simmons. I'm glad that uh, the brother's back on the court, but it means nothing. <laughs> right? Absolutely, positively nothing. I, it, it's so funny because uh, to my man Rob Markman, he's a big, big Brooklyn Nets fan, and he, he literally <laughs> sent a bunch of... <laughs> He sent what? a bunch of text to the group chat and he was like, I will not get my hopes up over Bill Simmons. I'll not get my hopes up over Bill Simmons. I'll not get my ben hopes Simmons. up over Bill Ben Simmons. Mm-hmm. You know, and he acted like he was writing on a chalkboard because mm-hmm. he didn't want to get his hopes up. Damn. So I just want to tell all Brooklyn Nets fans out there, don't get your hopes up because Ben Simmons is back, okay? I keep calling him Bill Simmons. That's how long he's been gone. I can't even remember the name. Well, he they won last night, 147-114. And also, uh, Shakur Stevenson is claiming that he is retired from boxing at age 26. He I, said I yesterday. I that. Uh, yesterday, he put on his uh, Twitter, I'm officially retired from the sport of boxing. I'll be in the gym forever perfecting my craft and helping the next generation become great and chase their dreams. But I ain't effing with this weak boxing game. Yeah, I don't believe that. Shaquille Stevenson is uh, too great, too young. And I think he's probably he's probably, having, fed up. He's probably having problems uh, securing a, a major, major fight. Like a lot of those guys I'm out sure. there that he wants to get in the ring with, the Devin Haney's, you know, who 
uh, tank maybe. Mm-hmm. It, it's not happening for him. So he's probably frustrated at I'm his sure. promoters. That's what I think it is. All right. Well, what up, Tiz? Hey, what's going on, DJ Envy? Charlemagne the God. Peace, Tiz. Let's jump right into it. Let's talk about the, uh, the, the uh, drone strike in Jordan. Yeah, three Army Reserve soldiers, you know, rest in peace to them. A bit of a sad story. Uh, the Defense Department has released the identity of the three U.S. Army Reserve soldiers who were killed Sunday in an attack at a base in northeast Georgia. Now, these were the first U.S. deaths in months of strikes by the Iranian-backed uh, militant groups uh, since the Israel-Hamas war started on October 7th. Let's take a listen. President Biden meeting with his national security team in the Situation Room. Under pressure to respond after an attack the Pentagon says was launched by Iranian-backed militias in which U.S. soldiers were killed. We've now learned the names of the three fallen troops. 46-year-old Sergeant William Jerome Rivers. 23-year-old specialist Brianna Alexandria Moffat, whose family described her as a very loving person, a very giving person. She loved life. And 24-year-old specialist Kennedy Ladon Sanders, her mother, talking to us tonight. She never expressed any fear. And um, Tower 22 is nothing that she ever mentioned to us. She was full of life. Um, She enjoyed life to the fullest. Um, You know, she was just... uh, a ray of sunshine for anyone that came in contact with her. Man, man, horrible, so horrible. Sending healing energy to the family of those three soldiers. Thank so you to sad. all the veterans out there uh, risking their lives, you know, for, for, for us on the daily. How, how did the, the drones get through to be able to do something like that? Yes. Yeah, they thought they thought that it was typically uh, a friendly. Uh, this area that they're in, they typically see friendly drones uh, come through. So obviously, uh, this was not one. Now this is the third attack uh, that has happened, uh, but the first time there were casualties and more than thirty people were injured with an explosive pack drone struck uh, when it struck the base near a shelter where some troops were sleeping, according to uh, the U.S. officials. And I did want to play this clip with United States Secretary of State Anthony, uh, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. This is what he had to say as far as retaliation we will respond strongly we will respond at a time uh, and place of our choosing and obviously i'm not going to telegraph what uh what we might do in this instance or get ahead of the president but i can again tell you that as the president said yesterday uh we will respond uh and that response could be multi-leveled come in stages and be sustained over time I don't I don't even like the fact that they're they're telling what they might do or what they might not do. I think they should be quiet and do what they got to do. But my my question to you is, is how do we know the difference between a friendly drone and and, and an evil drone? Why don't we just shoot down all the drones if they're coming in our (laughs) airspace? I was thinking the same thing. Like, does a a happy drone have a happy face on it? Like, how how do they decipher when it's flying in the air? Yeah, people in the military would know more than us. But what? what, yeah, if I'm a soldier and I'm out in the field, I wouldn't consider any drone friendly. Yeah, every drone, every drone got to go down. But you were in the military, so maybe. Yeah, uh, better, better insight. Right. Well, it was at a U.S. base. So, uh, you know, a lot of times you don't want to shoot down stuff that's friendly as well. So when they were at a U.S. base, and let me just kind of put this point out there as well. You know, you'll hear a lot of people say, oh, reservists. uh, I just want to say this as a veteran. People say reservists are never, you know, uh, around anything dangerous. If you do an administrative job, you're not around dangerous. I want to point out that these people were not working dangerous jobs. Uh, They were at a base, which is supposed to be secure. And so when you have drones that are around with them doing, you know, surveillance or uh, it could be any type of uh uh, any type of uh, activity that the the base itself is doing, so you don't know what's friendly, you don't know uh, what it what is um, possibly has intercepted, and that's the thing about going to war. War has real casualties. This is a risk, you know, that you take, and it's unfortunate when something like this happens and they're able to, you know, to to break through, um, and we get a casualty. I want to say this though: uh, Progressive Congresswoman Jayapal is asking President Biden to seek permission from Congress first before any retaliation, um, because we covered that a couple of weeks ago. Remember how they did. Some some airstrikes without technically, you know, receiving permission. So they are asking that President Biden seeks permission. And this is what she had to say. Well, my heart goes out to the families of those service members. And uh, this was a a, a terrible tragedy. Um, I think the challenge now is that we are increasingly getting pulled into a wider and wider war in the Middle East. And I think we have to be extremely careful about what our next steps are. I wonder if, uh, you know, there, there's, there's any liability because it, it, I keep reading the headlines that, it, that they call it a drone mix-up. Mm-hmm. So they say a drone mix-up was cited in the deaths of the three 
U.S. troops. And uh, the Washington Post said the U.S. mixed up enemy-friendly drones in an attack that killed three troops. So I wonder if there's going to be some, some liability on somebody's part. Yeah, I would yeah. just love to know more about the drones and how they decipher which drones can come into, you know, our territory and which drones can. I would figure that all drones would be, you know, you couldn't have any drones where there are people with our military has. So the other the other night, well, I, don't, I think it was the Chiefs game, it was a drone that got too close and they damn near emptied the field like they got they damn they got all the players off the field so i just don't mm -hmm. know how, how how the difference is with, with you know with military well because when you're on a military base because again it was a military base so when you're on a military base you, you see that type of stuff you know happening all the time and again trying to figure out uh is it friendly is it not friendly they believe though uh that this is an islamic uh islamic resistance of iraq that has done this uh and so again those drones coming all the time it's not really quite clear if they're going to say hey it was the u.s's fault was is it the uh, militia, you know, the, the militia's fault? Right. And so we'll see how that all plays out. Um, there's some folks that say, you know. Um, they said, they said the, American, the American air defense is confused the enemy mm -hmm. drone with a friendly one that was coming in at the same time. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. wow. And you just can't shoot down every drone that comes in. So I, I do understand your point, DJ Amy, but on a base, you know, that's those are the kind of things, you know, that are happening. You, right. It could be any reason. They could be testing. They could be, you know, uh, doing surveillance. I mean, it could be any reason why you see it. So you can't just necessarily go into, uh, you know, shooting everything down because this was the area that was supposed to be safe. They weren't mm -hmm. in the field. You know, they were at, at, at a base sleeping. So... All right. Well, well, rest in peace to those brothers and uh, and those sisters. All right. Well, that is front page news. Just just one quick question, since like I said, you were in the military. What would you want to see in return? Uh, I I, I don't. Ooh, that's a tough question. Because everybody um, else looks at it differently, but since you were actually on the field, like you were there, like what would you want to see in return? Well, my actual job was an M60 gunner, um, so I actually uh, protected you know troops on the ground on the plane and mm -hmm. act, that was actually my job so if you were to ask my put my military hat on uh then i want to see retaliation um but if you were to ask my political side when you look at getting into this war and how many wars do we have going on and how do we is this going to make it harder for in the, in the middle east then yeah you got to kind of look at all those things so military side M60 gunner side retaliation um, but if it's not done right and it's putting us in more danger and more soldiers are in danger then now we got a bigger problem because we got a couple of different wars going on in the east right now so okay, kind of hard question well thank you thank you and we'll see in a little bit what we talk about when we come back yeah, I know most of our listeners are driving while they're listening to this. If you are driving a Toyota, you definitely need to listen to this. They are sending out a do not drive warning. They want you to uh, some particular Toyota brands. They want you to stop driving immediately. And if you are if you want to make four hundred thousand dollars a year, you might want to apply at Walmart. So I'm going to give you that information when we come back. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Yo, Charlemagne, Gizzy, what up? Are we live? This is your time to get it off your chest. I got an indoor pool, an outdoor pool. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. We can get on the phone right now here and tell you what it is. We live? Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Shakira. Hey, Shakira, Shakira, Shakira. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, MV. Good morning, Charlemagne. Peace, peace. How are you? I'm all right. How y'all doing? Bless Black doing and highly great. favored. What's happening? I was just calling to congratulate y'all because I was mad at y'all because y'all wasn't answering the questions about Jess. No. <laughs> Listen, man, we had a little fun. Why can't That's we all. have a little fun? That's all. I get it. I get it. But I just was like, man, what happened? I wasn't like thinking something funny was going on. It was just like, what is it that's going on? Nothing. She was supposed to start February 5th the whole yeah, time. That was, that was the so it was just like, yo, let's have a little fun well, for a few weeks, man. Get the people going, you know? We know that now. <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy for y'all. This is a great start. And um, I'm calling from Charleston, by the way. I can, hear, I can hear the Geechee in your throat. What are you talking about? I hear the 843 okay. all through okay. you. Okay, Charlemagne. You already know. <laughs> you already know. Have a good cool one. Okay, care. well, you too. Y'all have a blessing. Absolutely. Salute to everybody in the 843, man. Everybody in Charleston, South Carolina, man. Did I tell y'all about my Ford Family Scholarship? Remind me to tell y'all about that in a second. Hello, who's this? All right, yeah, you be, this Kassan, what's up? Sorry, you be, you be telling us about that all the time. Well, I got but, I, uh, I got to let the students know because the deadline is February 16th. The students at South yeah, Carolina State real, University. Son. Yes, but go ahead. Yeah, for real. You be, uh, I, want, I just want to shout out Jess Hilarious. Congratulations to her 
But I also want to say, don't forget about Lauren LaRosa. She really can handle herself on the radio. I like how she did that Partisan Fontaine interview. And I like how she handled Charlamagne. What's your friend that was on Real Housewives that come up there sometimes? Ebony Williams? Ebony K. Williams. Ebony K. Williams. Yeah, remember her and Ebony K. Williams had that conversation. I really like that, too. They, um, I, I like um, Lauren LaRosa. But shout out to Jess Hilarious. That's a good selection as well. Yeah, how, much Lauren Lauren call you to pay, how much Lauren pay you to call up here? Stop, stop it, man. Stop <laughs> it. Lauren don't have Lauren stop there to pay me nothing. I love you. <clears throat> hey, shout out to, shout out to my um, friend D.W., her husband, Julian. Shout out to my brother, my nephew, Dominic Grayson Cree. I love y'all. Uh, shout out to my best friend, Kayla, her sister, Rachel. Y'all, we love y'all. Thanks for what y'all do, Breakfast Club. Thank, Thank you, brother. brother. Shout out to the whole Delaware, too. Now, salute to Lauren, though. Yeah, salute mm-hmm. to Lauren LaRose. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Get it up. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, top of the morning, MV. Charlamagne. Peace, King. What's up, bro? Get it off your chest. Peace, peace. Yo, just first and foremost, man, I want to give a shout out to my twin sister and her husband, Gloria and Keith. They out in Long Island. Um, Them, them two, them boys they got, them King boys, Keith and Karan. Shout out to Elwood. John Glenn out Long Island High School. The boys has won some wrestling tournaments. They monsters. Look them boys up. Look out for them. But uh, another most important thing, shout out to Jess Hilarious. I thought y'all was playing it real close to the chest. I love it. Um, thank you for the hat too, big. Appreciate it. Oh, you got the hat? You got the black effect hat? Yeah, you, you already and, and everybody want it. I appreciate that, is, man. Brother. You can go to uh, blackeffect.com, too. We got our merch store up. You can get Black Effect hats, Black Effect t-shirts, man. But uh, yes, man, salute to the good sister, Jess Hilarious. It brings me great joy to see that y'all are happy that Jess Hilarious will be the third co-host uh, on The Breakfast Club starting February 5th. That's right, next Monday. Hello, who's this? Good morning, it's your boy Lovey from the Bronx. Good morning, family. Love, love you, what up, What's King? What's up, brother? Get it off your chest, Lovey. Yeah, I want to officially welcome Jess from the Bronx Borough. And let her know that me and Tez are out here riding for her. Okay, well, she starts next Monday, man. You and Tez ain't a couple, but either way, love you. I just want to let y'all know. Oh, yeah, 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 we are. I, I, you just didn't get the memo yet. It, oh. You'll get the memo. You'll get it. Don't worry about it. Okay, all right. All right. What, what y'all need to be thinking about is getting just like some uh, welcome gifts. You know what I mean? Some housewarming stuff, you know. Somebody out there might want to provide some furniture. You know what I mean? It's, it's, oh, I, I got him. I got, I got you, Jess. I know she got a hubby and all, but you know me and Tess gonna take care. of We gonna bless her. Bless her with what? I, I'm gonna talk to Tess later. We, we, we'll figure it out. We, we, we got you. Oh God! <laughs> all right, man. Have a blessed have day. A love good you. One, man. Love you. You supposed to provide a love seat. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Oh, this is Jesse from the eight four three. I'm sorry, I thought you were on the video already. I'm hey, eight four three, Low good Country. Morning. What's happening? What part of the eight four three you calling from? Florence. Florence. Flow okay. Town. Salute to everybody in Flow Town. Salute to my guy DJ B Lord. What's happening? Get it off your chest, mama. <laughs> Nothing. I just really want to spread some positivity today. You know, the okay. world that we live in is so crazy. We focus so much on these little beasts, like what's going on with Megan and Nikki, that we don't take time to be grateful for what we have as individuals. We live through these celebrities, you know. So I just want to encourage someone, you know, no matter what you're going through, it's going to get better. Okay. You yeah, may not see right. it right now. But it will always be better. Um, don't give in to your intrusive thoughts. Don't, you know, take your own life. Your life is worth living. You're here for a purpose. There you go. That's and right. And I love you. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say because we have all this negative going on. I want to try to change the narrative and put some positive out there. Well, thank, thank you, you, Florence. Justin. And, you know, listen, I'm going to give you all something positive because, you know, Florence, South Carolina, uh, you know, right close to Orangeburg. You know, if you're going down I-26, right? So I want to tell you yeah. that uh, I have a scholarship fund at South Carolina State University. Okay, it's open to current South Carolina State University sophomore and senior students for spring 2024. You must be a state of South Carolina resident and you must major in English or communications or related fields because that was my mom's major at South Carolina State. Our studies in mental health related fields, psychology, counseling or psychiatry because you know uh, I'm a big mental health advocate. So you can go to bit.ly slash 
Ford Family SCSU Scholarship. That's bit.ly Ford Family SCSU Scholarship. The apply. The deadline is February 16th at 11.59 p.m. Uh, for all South Carolina State students, man. Go get that Ford Family Endowment Scholarship uh, courtesy of your Uncle Charlotte. All right. And get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. When we come back... We got to talk Taylor Swift and the Taylor Bowl. That's Man, right. Man, I want to talk Jeff Hilarious and, and the, the Breakfast Club Bowl. We're going to talk that too, but we're going to oh, talk okay. Taylor Swift and the Taylor Bowl. I don't want to talk about Taylor Swift and the Taylor Bowl because that's disrespectful to Usher. And you see, and that's exactly, I said this two weeks ago. I said, if Taylor Swift makes it to the Super Bowl, that's what people are going to start doing. It's going to be all about Taylor Swift and we're going to overshadow our good brother Usher Raymond. It's still the Usher Bowl. And the fact that you said that as a Dominican man is crazy to me. I'm not Dominican. You're a Dominican man that came Dominican. up in hip-hop and R&B culture, Dominican. and you're going to call it the Taylor Bowl, no one Usher I'm, performing? I'm not That's Dominican. disrespectful, yo. I'm not Dominican, That's disrespectful. and Usher is performing. But we're going to no, talk it's about It's the Usher Bowl. There ain't no damn Taylor Bowl. We're going to talk about it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. <laughs> Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Jesse Lattice. Rumor rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty uh, patty. I'm gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we're on the Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Right. Yes. Like, now, yesterday uh, was announced that Jess Hilarious will be the third co-host here on The Breakfast Club. She starts next Monday, February 5th. Yes, indeed. And people were super duper excited. A bunch of people wanted to say congratulations to her, like uh, B. Simone, uh, Tammy Roman, Taylor Bennett, uh, D. Ray Davis, My Sister's a Star, Earthquake, congratulations, sis. Do that ish, much love. Uh, Portia said supreme rollout then uh claudia jordan happy for you jess hilarious nene leaks congrats congrats jess so many people just wanted to send uh warm wishes and also it was, uh, a, it was a fantastic rollout by it was way. great 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 job and salute to uh ovo eli and nick for uh doing the content for that excuse me they they recorded it they didn't record it hmm. <laughs> okay okay Continue, Ray. <laughs> Can I finish what I'm saying? No. Salute to uh, Eli, OVO Eli, and... Uh, We're a team here. Yes, okay. we are, but I'm just going to salute them. I want, Can I finish what I'm saying, please? No, no too bad. <laughs> salute to uh, OVO Eli <laughs> and Nick can't. for uh, taping that. Uh, Charlemagne, salute for you, because Charlemagne I did was, nothing. Charlemagne was all I over... I did nothing. I've done nothing Shut on this up! show for the past 14 years. I'll just be here. Nothing, okay? <laughs> salute the club. Now, salute the Santa Shop. No, no so I want to salute. salute. No, to man. Yeah, no, salute no, to Charlemagne no. and everybody that put that thing together. And again, congratulations <laughs> to Jess Hilarious. Yeah, salute to Jess Hilarious. Now, also... Drop on the clues, Bob's Bob, good sister, Jess Hilarious. Would you let me do my last rumors? I got four days left. No. And also, <laughs> Shannon Sharp <laughs> talked about Jess Hilarious, and they wanted to congratulate her as well. Ojo, we got to give a congratulations to uh, Jess Hilarious. She's the new co-host of The Breakfast Club. Hey. DJ Envy and Charlemagne the God. Okay. So congratulations to her. Congratulations, um, Jess. Y'all bring, yeah. bring me on. I tell you what I didn't know. Look, what? I know what she's happened? a comedian. Yo, she's and just, I fun, just funny now. Yeah. Just her funny body now. ain't no laughing matter, though. Excuse I didn't me? know she was like that. What? Oh, her body? Ooh. Like, my, like my body. Yada, 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 <laughs> yada, 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 nope. yada, body. Oh. Nope. Body on th oh. Yes, hilarious. What? Nope. You Boy, ain't, ain't nothing funny about that. Nope. Boy, I ain't know that. I did not know Ocho. I yeah. just like, okay, let me see. You know, yeah. so I, you know, I got two phones, Ocho. I pull up a different site. Right. I'll drop them down. Enough. Like that? Jesus. Nah, I'll give you Man, I'm saying like something too. Hey, like Kyrie dribbling two basketball. Hey, man, <laughs> you gotta go. I feel like we had a cookout in the summer, and I, I gotta, gotta tell go. my partners, hey, don't be looking at my sister like that. That's wrong with you, <laughs> okay? Go. And she's young enough to be your daughter. Right? Get out, Shannon, you 55, <laughs> just 31. Cut it out, okay? Talk about Kyrie Irving. The hell, Kyrie Irving got to do with this? I want you to, I want you to see just the way Kyrie Irving sees the earth. Okay, flat. It's, flat. it's flat. You don't see nothing. Cut it out, Uncle. All right. Uh, Drop on the clues bombs for Shannon Sharp and Ocho Cinco. Okay. Salute to, I saw Ocho Cinco uh, last year at the airport. I forgot where I was at. I think Vegas or something. Mm -hmm. Salute to Ocho Cinco. Salute to uh, Shannon Sharp. Love what y'all doing over there, man. Okay. Now, all the papers, all the new paper talk about the trailer bowl. The trailer That's bowl. That's right. The trailer bowl. I'm glad you said that. The trailer bowl. Say it again, Envy. You want, you want, you want smoke with the Swifties. Say it. Say it again. The, the trailer, trailer bowl. bowl. That's right. Why is it the trailer bowl? Because the trailer park trash? What you saying, Envy? 
I'm, I'm reading from the post. <laughs> what is it the tra- why did they say the I trailer bowl? I, I, I didn't get that far. They just said it's the trailer bowl. They said why that- is it the trailer bowl? Why, why, why were you saying <laughs> that? I thought you were saying trailer park trash. <laughs> no, I wasn't saying that. Travis oh, Travis and Taylor, so it's trailer. Oh. Where were you going? He said trailer park. I just I, thought you was insulting all our fans for no reason. I was with you. I had he was you excited. Back. Let's go, MP. <laughs> let's go. Trailer, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I had you back. I was like, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what we doing? Now, they're saying that um, a couple of things. Well, they're saying that the Super Bowl tickets went up, uh, they believe, 33%. Now, tickets are on oh, average on, is twelve thousand dollars. The lowest price you can get on a ticket is ninety eight hundred dollars, which is seventy percent more expensive than last year's big game. I know they're not attributing that to Taylor Swift. Now they're also saying all the private jets, uh, the reservations for jets landing is sold out. So if you have a private jet, you can't land in the oh, come on, in stop. the spot because so many private jets will be landing. That ain't got nothing to do with Taylor Swift. Uh, they also, United Airlines, uh, is doing something special for all Kansas City Chiefs and Taylor Swift fans. They are adding more flights from Kansas City to Vegas, and they're naming it like after her album, like Flight Why? 1989, which is her album. Flight uh, 22, I guess, which is her album in 87, which is We're Kelsey's number. Uh, We're not doing this. Yeah, so that that's what they're doing. We're not doing this the next two weeks. This is why so many of us was hoping the Ravens beat the Chiefs because we knew that everyone and their mother was going to be talking about Taylor Swift for the next couple of weeks, right? We're not doing that. And here's the thing. Black people, I'm talking to you right now. We have the tendency to elevate things by talking about how much we don't like them. We're not doing that with Taylor because what happens, uh, we're going to do that and then all the Swifties and everyone who loves Taylor are going to start defending Taylor and before you know it, it's a civil war on social media and all the chatter is about Taylor. No, let's keep the chatter about Usher Raymond the Fourth. Okay, and Usher uh, continuing to get his much deserved flowers at the Super Bowl in Vegas uh, in two weeks. That's all we should be discussing. Well, this is the last thing. They're saying uh, Super Bowl viewership is expected to increase by 15 million if Taylor Swift attends. She has a show in Japan the night before, so they're trying to figure out if she will make it in time. And now you could actually bet to see if Kelsey man, is going to propose man. to Taylor Swift shut up. at the Super Bowl. What's the odds on that, Red? Did you check the odds on that? Or you didn't check the odds on that? You didn't check the odds on that. So. So, so it has nothing to do with the fact that the San Francisco 49ers are one of the most storied franchises in NFL history. They've won, like, what, five Super Bowls, I believe? It's not, it has nothing to do with the fact that Kansas City, the Kansas City Chiefs are, like, the newest dynasty in the NFL. They've been to the Super Bowl four out of the last five years. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with the fact that Usher Raymond the fourth. It's performing at halftime. It's all because of Taylor Swift. Hey, if y'all can get the hell out of here. Hey, they say if Taylor Swift attends, they say uh, the viewership's going to increase by 15 million. Man, shut up, man. I hope they're already come. tracking her plane to see when her concert's over in Japan and she flies back to see her, her boo play in the Super Bowl. Man, please. You think you're going to propose? I don't care. <laughs> Leave me alone. Super Bowl is the biggest thing every year in America as far as viewing. And now all of a sudden, y'all going to attribute these hundreds of millions of people who've been watching the Super Bowl for years to Taylor Swift? Cut it out, man. Yeah, they're saying the average price of a 30-second uh, advertising spot went up, and they said it sold out because Taylor Swift is going to be going to the Super Bowl. The all-time record for Super Bowl viewers was set in 2015 for the Patriots versus the Seahawks. It was $114 million. Last year's ratings for Kansas City versus Philadelphia drew 112 million viewers. Okay? The, America already watches the Super Bowl. Cut it out, man. And lastly, they have a, another bet to see who's going to be Taylor, right. Taylor, Taylor right, Swift. Go Commercial, please. Go to commercial right now. Right. You know who's going to be in Taylor Swift right. Super Bowl box? Travis Kelsey. That's you who. Know? That's the only person going to be in Taylor Swift box, okay? That's his girl. <laughs> go, to, go to the commercial, right? Please. They're the saying. Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. What up, Tiz? What's going on, DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy, Breakfast Club family? Peace, Ted. Let's jump right into it. Let's talk some of these car dealerships. What's up with Toyota? Yeah, this is really important. I know a lot of our listeners are driving, but Toyota has said that they are urging the owners of 50,000 older U.S. vehicles to get immediate recall repairs because an airbag uh, is dysfunctioning. And they said it could possibly kill motorists. Uh, They said they are putting out a do not drive advisory covering some of the 2003 to 2004 models of the Corolla, the 2003 2004 model of the Corolla Matrix and the 2004 2005 RAV 
fours uh, that have airbags. They said more than 30 deaths worldwide have happened as a result of this, including 26 U.S. deaths and hundreds of injuries uh, has happened as a result of this. So if you are driving a Toyota, uh, definitely this is not a recall to, you know, take lightly. Definitely uh, get look into that so that uh, you can be safe. Well, let me ask y'all a question. When they say stuff like this, right, when Toyota says, you know, stop driving and get immediate repairs. Mm-hmm. Are they paying mm-hmm. for those repairs? Can yes. I take them to a Toyota no, dealership? No, they're paying for them. Okay, they're just making sure. Absolutely. It's under warranty. They're okay. paying for them. Just making sure. Yeah. And I will, I, will, I will say this. Usually that happens because somebody gets into an accident. Usually somebody passes away and dies and they mm-hmm. want to make sure it doesn't happen again. So they're encouraging everybody to bring their cars in so to prevent any more deaths or accidents or injuries. Such an inconvenience, mm-hmm. man. Because, you know, what if you, you know, you got to get to work today or you got to get to school today? You know what I mean? Or you got somewhere to be today? Like literally right now. Well, you don't. Well, you don't have to bring the car in right now. Some of these cars people have for six, seven years, and they've been driving for six, seven years, and they haven't had an issue. Well, hold on, now y'all gotta stop sending missed messages. But to they want people to bring their cars in as soon as they can for repairs. Say get immediate yeah. repairs. Yeah, immediate but, mean immediate. But people have been driving these cars for like six, seven years. Oh, yeah, but see, okay. you don't want to take a risk. You probably want to do immediate though. Don't yeah, you but think they get immediate. Right. If a doctor tell me, "Hey, man, you need to get here immediately," I'm not gonna be like, "Well, give me a minute, doc." You know what I'm saying? I've been driving. I've been I've been having this ailment for five, six years anyway. I'll be. No. I'll be cool. Well, I do want to say this. A lot of the dealerships, it's not for everybody, but a lot of dealerships, they'll give you a rental car, you know, while you take in the car. Because it is an inconvenience, to yeah. your point, Charlemagne. But the reason why I do these recalls, guys, and I know you say, well, Tez, you're always doing recalls. They do the poorest uh, average. They really don't reach out to people that well when you do this. When you think about when you bought a car six years ago, they probably have the wrong email on file. They don't call you. You never see it on the news. So I pay attention to these recalls because what if you literally, I got one for my car the other day, one of my older cars. They were talking about the sunroof, and I wouldn't have thought to check that old email. So I do these guys because, again, most of our listeners, how many? Eight million are listening in the car every morning. So when I see these car recalls, it's important. So you can take a chance, I guess, and not go in immediately or go in immediately. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah now, they should definitely go in when they can, but uh, they also send letters out. And the problem with those letters is nine times out of ten, you always think it's them trying to buy your car, them trying to sell you a new sure. car. So half the time, I don't even open up them letters. You just toss them. Right, so or you've you maybe moved since that, 2008. Right. Everybody, and I stay in the. I've moved. I've been in three different cities since then. So, the, just how they get this information out, you you really hardly don't see it. And I just think this is important um, for our, for our drivers. So that's why I do those recall stories, guys. Absolutely. Now let's talk about Walmart. You can make four hundred thousand dollars and no college degree needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you want four hundred to the possibility, let me be clear to make four hundred thousand dollars without a college degree. Walmart said its store managers can earn that much. The company announced Monday that it will give twenty thousand in stock grants each year uh, to the super center managers. On top of that, managers can earn up to 200% of their base pay uh, as well as yearly bonuses based upon the store's sales and profits. So we got to keep that in mind. Some of the smaller stores may not make as much as, you know, the larger stores, uh, but they can make an additional $256,000 annually uh, with the higher pay and the stock. All of that combined means that you can make up to $404,000 a year. Now, Walmart said it noted that no college degree is required to become a manager and that three or four and that in three out of four people in management roles at stores uh, really did start as hourly workers. Uh, it says it takes about an average of five years to move up from an entry role position to a manager position. And just to give you guys what those salaries are, because I looked into some additional mm-hmm. information. Typically, they may start at maybe eighty nine thousand dollars at some of the smaller stores uh, and can go up to two hundred thousand dollars a year in some of the big cities. So shout out to Walmart. I worked at Walmart uh, back in the day. So shout out to them. Man, for, drop for on a clues bond for Walmart. OK, that is fantastic. You already know how I feel about Walmart. That is holy grounds to me. When you grow up in a small rural town like I did, Monk's Corner, South Carolina, uh, that was where we hung out late at night because it was open 24 hours. You know what I mean? So, hung out at the Walmart? Just I mean, there, there was nothing else randomly. to do. So when you're a young kid, you know, you young teenager, and 12 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock at night, hey, let's go walk around Walmart. You know, it was over 24 hours, you know, at the right. time. So you know, that's a very uh, honorable position. $400,000 to be a store manager at Walmart, that's a, that's a great living. Mm-hmm. And maybe I should have stayed. I worked at Walmart, Target, uh, all of those uh, stores. So, so, so thought that be some good information. Mm-hmm. You know what's so interesting? I love. I still love Walmart, but you know, Target is like uh, Walmart was my childhood. Target is my adult life. <laughs> Why Target? Little bougie. You like the. Uh, what do you I, mean, like I, I guess I guess I, I guess because up here, up, uh, you know, up, up here in New in, in New York, New Jersey area, you know, I see a lot of them. It's closer, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. I go to Target, or the, the Targets are closer to me than the Walmarts are. Mm-hmm. Even though they, have, I mean, they definitely have Walmart up here, but Targets are closer to me. And I used to go. I, I love the Target T-shirts when they mm-hmm. used to have the Mosimo T-shirts, and now they got the Goodfella T-shirts. 
It's great quality, man. I agree. I'm still I still like Walmart over Target though. But I'm I love cheap. Walmart. No 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 yeah. qualms here. Love Walmart. <laughs> All right. Well, that okay. is front page news. Thank you, Tiz. Uh-huh, absolutely. And make sure you follow at Tedlin Figaro on all social media platforms at Tedlin Figaro and subscribe to this great shot. No chaser podcast uh, hosted by Tedlin Figaro on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. All right. When we come back, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Let's talk Shaquille O'Neal. Now, Shaquille O'Neal was doing a podcast. Is it his podcast? Yes. I think that was his podcast called The Big Podcast. The Big Podcast. Now, on the podcast, he was talking about men should never open up to a woman. And this is what he said. You open up to a woman? Yeah. Never. No, never. When's the last time you think you've opened up to a woman? We don't. In your whole life? Bro, I'm telling you. And they're going to tell you you can. Because you know why? But it's a trap. Because you know why? Because once you do, whenever something goes down, they're going to throw it back in your face. Oh, that's that I've had. That's that. why. Real. That's why. So you can't ever. That's why you cry because your dad yeah, yeah, left you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, do you feel that way? Do you feel like you'll never open up to a woman because you feel like she'll throw it back in your face? Let's discuss. 800-585-1051 We'll take your calls When we come back It's The Breakfast Club Good morning The Breakfast Club It's topic time Call 800-585-1051 To join into the discussion With The Breakfast Club Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're opening up the phone lines, 800 585 1051. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal was doing his podcast, and this is what he said about opening up to women. You open up to a woman? Yeah. Never. No, never. When's the last time you think you've opened up to a woman? We don't. In your whole life? Bro, I'm telling you. And they're going to tell you you can. Because you know why? But it's a trap. Because you know why? Because once you do, Whenever something go down, they're going to throw it back in your face. Oh, that's that I've that's had why. Real. That's why. So you can't ever. That's why you cry because your dad yeah, yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's discuss. 800-585-1051. What's your thought, Charlamagne? Uh, I mean, it depends who the woman is, and it depends what your relationship with the woman is. You know, if it's just some chick you smashing, yeah, you probably don't want to open up to her. You know what I mean? You probably don't want to be vulnerable with her. But if it's, you know, your wife or... You know, longtime partner, or you know, a, 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 a really good friend, a best friend, or somebody you consider a sister. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with opening them, opening up to them, and, and being vulnerable with them. And, and I don't even want to make that a gender thing. Like people tend to, you know, if they're not good people, they'll tend to throw things back in your face. You know, when it's when it's convenient, mm-hmm. convenient to them, or when they, you know, trying to throw a jab at you or throw a shot at you so it's just not a, it's not a gender thing it's a people thing to me but if you want to just keep it about women it just depends on who the woman is <laughs> like simple as that mm-hmm. you're not gonna open up to your mom you're not gonna open up to your grandma you're not gonna open up to your wife you're not gonna open up to a long time partner of course you will like I, I wouldn't it, want to be in a relationship with somebody that I can't open up to I think it takes time uh, I mean thank God I'm, I'm able to open up to my wife but I, I think it's also what you see right I, I think um, watching my dad my dad never really opened up to anybody. He just kept everything to himself. And I think for myself, it was one of those things as well, starting off. You open up, right? So for myself, when we talk about opening up your feelings and really having those conversations, yeah, it took a long time because one, you didn't know how to because you didn't see it. And two, I, I would say the same thing. It's, it's like, you know, th- these are your deepest, darkest feelings sometimes. And, and sometimes you, you don't know how to open up. You don't know how they're going to be. Because once you open up and you're able to be free, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. And I'll tell you something else that's good. This is why I'm a big proponent of therapy. You what? know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you and your significant other got to go sit with somebody. So when you go sit with somebody, it's kind of like a referee there and it's a safe space, you know? And I think that it's something about, you know, revealing things in therapy that cause you not to bring it up later. Like sometimes if you reveal things just amongst each other, you know, later on when y'all having an argument, you might just pull it up. But for something about that... Something about the therapy of it all makes it sound seem more official, and you don't just use yeah. it against people, you know. But e- but even if you go beyond just feelings and emotions, and you go sexually, right? A lot what? of men won't open up sexually. Like I, I was just thinking, uh, shout a lot out of Big men Mac. won't open up sexually. Pause. <laughs> hey yo, what's up with this guy, Red? I was. <laughs> God damn, that was so flagrant. Oh, a lot gosh. of men won't open up sexually. See, damn. You. I was, you know, damn. I was. It was. I was talking to Big Mac. Pause. And Big Mac was reminding me that Amber Rose was talking about, you know, how allegedly Kanye likes fingers in them. Okay, stop. But if he likes that, he opened up to her. And that should be between them, correct? 
I have no idea what you're talking about no more, man. <laughs> I really don't. This you know, why, that's why I don't even you? like having so-called serious conversations. I don't on like this you. Damn show. I don't like you. Okay. I don't, I don't like you. <laughs> this guy is crazy. This guy <laughs> said men won't open up sexually, and then his very next thought is about a man getting a finger in his butt. <laughs> right? It was no need for me to pause that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. He fast forwarded it's to on, the scene he wanted. It's on brand. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hey, Jerm. Hey, what's up, Jerm? Yeah, man. I'm about the topic. Yep. Uh, you know, about confining to your woman. No matter what you tell them, when they get mad, man, they can always bring you back up and try to use it against you. So you don't open up to your woman? I do. But there's certain things I can't tell because I know it can get used against me at any point of time. Now, how long you been with your woman? We've been together for 12 years, married for five. Damn, you don't trust her yet? Damn. It's not about trust. It's just, it's just like, when certain things, when you tell it and, and try to confine it to your woman, and you think you, you did until that argument comes and, and, and it comes back up, I'm like, damn, it just threw, threw me left. My brother, yes. So I was trying you, to my, my brother, break it down. My brother. What's up? It is all about trust. You don't trust her. Okay? You, you, don't you, trust you don't trust her to not use your feelings against you. Yep. T. Good morning. Hey, good morning. What, what, what do you think about what Shaq said? Absolutely. Really? As soon as they are hurt, they're going to throw that right in your face. So you don't open up to your, your significant other? Hold on. So you a lesbian? What? No, because we said women. We said <laughs> we Shaq said. I mean, I get it. Shaq, I, we can open it up to all people, but we talk about women specifically. <laughs> I was I was just... I wasn't expecting that one. So from a woman's perspective, yes, yes, a man will absolutely take your most sacred secrets and throw them right at you as soon as they're upset and mad. How you make this about us? This is about <laughs> y'all this morning, ma'am. This is not about hey, what men look, will do. It's about what women hey, will do. We do what we want to do, right? You right. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. But no, she, 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 I'm, I'm joking, but that's what I said earlier. It's about people. Right. Because if people, you know, if you don't trust a person, you know, men are women, anybody can use something against you and, you know, y'all get into an argument. That's why I like, I like that, I like to have issues with people sometimes because whatever a person says to you when they mad, that's what they always wanted to say to you and that's what they always felt about you to begin with. Absolutely. 800-585-1051. If you're just joining us, we're talking about something that Shaq said on his podcast. Let's listen. You open up to a woman? Yeah. Never. No, never. When's the last time you think you've opened up to a woman? We don't. In your whole life? Bro, I'm telling you. If yeah. they going to tell you, you can. Because you know why? But it's a trap. Because you know why? Because once you do, whenever something goes down, they're going to throw it back in your face. Well, that's that I've had. That's why. That's real. That's why. So you can't ever. That's why you cry because your dad yeah, yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And asking your thoughts, 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. If y'all talking about it, you know we talking about it. It's Topic Time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're talking about Shaquille O'Neal. He was on his podcast and talked about opening up to women. You open up to a woman? Yeah. Never. No, never. When's the last time you think you've opened up to a woman? We don't. In your whole life? Bro, I'm telling you. If okay. they're going to tell you, you can. Because you know why? But it's a trap. Because you know why? Because once you do, whenever something goes down, they're going to throw it back in your face. Well, that's that I've had that's that. why. real. That's why. So you can't ever. That's why you cry because your dad yeah, yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're asking 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts? We got JR on the line. JR, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's up, man? What's your thoughts on what Shaq said, brother? Man, I believe it, bro. Like, you know, women, they, they're the kings when it comes to them arguments. So they're going to have the right fuel. So that as soon as you open up to them, that's what they're going to throw at you, man. So, so you don't open up to your woman. You don't tell her some of the things that you need to tell her because you know she's going to throw it back in your face. Yeah, you got to kind of keep some things to yourself, like, you know, crying in front of them, shit like that. My what? boy can't curse, but, uh, yeah, you know, certain things you can't do, man, because they're going to they gonna use that against you, man. Man, y'all don't have y'all don't have real people in y'all in y'all circle. Then I mean, I, I do understand you got to be careful who you trust and tell your problems to, because not everyone that smiles at you is your friend. But damn, your significant other, the person you lay down with at night, you should be able to cry, your wife? you should be able to complain, you should be able to get whatever you need to get off of your chest if, if you really love that person. That person loves you. Hello, who's this? Hello, this is Lauren. Hey, Lauren. Good morning. What did you think about what Shaq said? Um, it's true what Shaq said. Um, a woman would, throw, some depending, would throw it back on in your face. Um, but would anybody come for a person that's in an argument 
it doesn't matter male or female, um, a person who is upset is going to use anything to make the other person upset. So I still think what he said is not fair because it's not just a woman. A man would do the same. I mean, Mm -hmm. y'all haven't argued with a person before. Okay. No, I agree. I mean, I've, I've, I mean, me and my wife, we get into arguments, but I, there's never been a time when she threw something in my face that I told her that was bothering me or met, that made me insecure, and vice versa. That's that's part of love, right? If you love somebody, you don't want to use the things that they tell you or the things that you know that hurts them or, or doesn't against them, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, man. Uh, personally, to me, a good friend is 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 all about trust and loyalty. Like, you don't even want to second guess whether you can tell. Your, your actual friend something and I mean you know our, our wives our, our husbands our significant others whatever it is you're dealing with you know you should consider that person your best friend you know so if you can't trust yep. them you know enough to talk to them and you know you don't feel like they're loyal to you damn right damn 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 alright let's go to one more call we got Cassandra on the line Cassandra good morning hi good morning you guys good morning, morning Cassandra what's your thoughts Cassandra oh, 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 she said first of all what you about to say that is the stupidest I've ever heard in my life. This is why he's dumb and I should divorce now. Damn. Okay, continue. No, that's what I have to say. <laughs> oh, okay. that's it. Why do you, th- oh, you think it's dumb because it's not just about women that you can't trust, right? Exactly, because at the end of the day, if you cannot speak to your woman, who are you going to speak to? Your homeboy? Your dude? Yeah, I, I, I can wholeheartedly say without a shadow of a doubt, uh, I trust women way more with my feelings than I do these niggas. <laughs> like, exactly. That's why I was very surprised that of all people, Shaq said that. Come on, he's too old. He should know better. Well, I think he's speaking from personal experience. You know what I'm saying? Clearly, uh, you know, clearly he's been traumatized in some way, shape, or form by by a woman who violated his trust. Absolutely. Again, and this is why he's divorced. he's probably still single. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Jesus about that. Christ. Out the shack. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is when you completely trust a person without any doubt, you'll automatically receive one or two things: a friend for life or a lesson for life. Okay, that is the key to a good friendship. To me, a good friend is all about trust and loyalty. You don't want to ever second guess whether you can tell your friend something, man. All right, all right. When we come back, we got your rumor report. We got to tell you about Kanye West. He's back in the news. We'll tell you why. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Good morning. How are we going to say it when Jess comes? Is it going to be like DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, in, Charlemagne the God, or DJ NV, Charlemagne the God, Jess Hilarious? What is it going to be? What up, y'all? It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious. It's got to be a rhythm with your mouth, right? What up, y'all? It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. I like that. I like that rhythm. But I that, like that. I was thinking about how we got to do the intro there. Because what up? Good morning, USA. Good morning, yo, USA. Yo, 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 yo Just yo. hilarious. Yeah, just, just hilarious here. What up? And then Charlemagne. Peace to the God. Peace, Peace to, to the, the planet. planet. We figure it out. Yeah, we figure, we figure it out. out. We, we figure, figure it out. out. We figure it out. We're going to figure it out. Yeah, we'll get it together. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. If you don't know, Jess Hilarious starts uh, next Monday, February 5th. Next Monday. That's right. Mm-hmm. Super duper excited for Jess. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad right. we finally was able to tell people. Listen, man, uh, it was fun the last few weeks. We had, we had a lot of fun playing with you idiots, okay? <laughs> and it's a shame that people are so quick to think the worst. Yeah. They had I, they, make up their own stories, their own conclusions. We never said nothing. Nothing at all. You know? But it was fun. Yeah, it was. It just makes you really think about what people do at the higher levels, right? When you think about, you know, military agencies and mm-hmm. you, why they have psychological operation divisions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's just so easy. No, but it's also scary because people just make up their own stuff. It's so fun. No, it's not. Nobody cares about the truth and the, the lies, lies more entertaining. entertaining. I tell y'all that all the time. But, bro, they were making up all types of rumors and all types of saying she got fired on her day off. They, they said that she actually did one show. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> they said, said she did the first they said the show first once show. she got back from breaking. Um, and then, then we fired her. It's interesting, man. It just goes to show, especially in this year, there's going to, this is going to be a year of misinformation because yeah. there's a presidential election here, here in right. America and also in uh, South Africa. And then when you think of all of these things like AI mm-hmm. and, you know, bots and everything else, it used to be believe uh, none of what you hear and half of what you see. Right. Now it's like believe nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. I don't believe nothing. No, it's true. I don't know what it takes. You got to use discernment like you never used it before. 
Okay? But y'all damn sure ain't used none with us the past few weeks. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, though. All we right. appreciated the rollout. Now, when we come we back... helped we us tremendously. It did. When we come back, we got Kanye West. We got the rumor report with Kanye West. We'll tell you what he did. He snatched people's phones again. We'll get into it next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Here's Sizzle. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Kanye West. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty I patty. I'm gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on the Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Right. Yes. Now, Kanye West was walking down Hollywood Boulevard. He was on his way to Charlie Wilson's Walk of Fame ceremony. Him and his wife were walking down the street when a TMZ reporter approached him and started asking him questions about his wife. Kanye got mad, snatched the phone, uh, started screaming on a, the woman. And then after all of that, he offered her a job. She's TMZ, she's TMZ. Why do you feel like it's okay I'm a human being? What do you think yeah. that you a white woman you could walk up on me like that? And ask me some dumb ass shit like that? Ask me about my wife talking about this she got free will? Are you crazy? You insane? This is America. You got free will or you work for the devil? You got free will, you work for TMZ company? I'm a legend. You understand that? I'm here to support Charlie Wilson. You come and ask me some dumb ass shit about my wife. That's my wife. You understand? You want to ask me when I couldn't see my kids. I, I, Where is your phone? Yeah. Okay, they be right on each other. Yeah, how do you know me, miss? I'm, I'm I don't a, know you. What is her name? What is this lady's name? I'm just Melanie what? What's your address? What you making here? I'll pay you double what they paying you. Woo! Get her contact. Yes, I will. I will. Man, Kanye is a sucker. All right, when that man was yelling at him and his wife last week, he had nothing to say. He skedaddled. Remember, y'all forgot about mm -hmm. that just that fast. Remember that? Play that mm -hmm. clip. I am the real so nifty. You ain't sh boy. Don't at least not play with Cardi, too. I don't Come on. I am a god, homie. Lucifer, homie. You ain't sh boy. Kanye had you no smoke for that man last week. Boy, he, he, him and his cut. wife, he, he skedaddled. I am the real boy. I am the one, not ho, not you. I ain't Lupe Fiasco, I ain't most death, dog. This is my block. I am homeless 12 years, gay. I ain't listening since 07, not since graduation. Only little boys from my 12 months, I'm my shit. Kanye had no smoke for that man last week. He skedaddled, got in his vehicle and didn't want no issues. Why he ain't, why he ain't getting that man face and have a conversation with that man? Why you ain't getting that man face and ask him, why was he asking you all those questions? Why was he talking to you like that? Huh? Why you ain't tell him you was a legend? <laughs> I'm serious, man. Why, why he ain't offer him a job? I don't respect that. Yeah, exactly. He needed it. <laughs> he needed that it man needed, he was a homeless man. <laughs> that man needed a job. Why you ain't offer him that? <laughs> I don't respect that. He snatched a, a phone from a woman and act all tough. I don't respect that. All right. Sucker. Well, sucker, sucker, sucker. Well, also, uh, Megan Thee Stallion, she's facing backlash over the Megan's Law Bar in her new record, Hiss. If you don't remember, Megan Conker, uh, she was a seven-year-old girl murdered in the 90s by a sex predator, and they created this law. Now, Megan Conker's father said he didn't hear the song, but one of their youngest kids told him about it. He said he was happy that it actually sheds light to it, but he said it's still, uh, the song is so vo vo vulgar that uh, he has a lot of negative feelings towards it as well. I mean, can't tell that man how to feel. Mm -hmm. he, he, he's a father, so can't tell him how to feel. Yeah, but my question is with Megan's Law, it's, it's a law, right? So it, I'm Absolutely. sure a lot of people Google to see what Megan's Law was, right? Which which is probably what he wanted. I mean, he said that, though. Yeah. He said he, said he was happy about the attention that, it, that, you know, was brought to it because of it. But I guess he's talking about the rest of the song. Right, just the, the vulgar lyrics. People hear, people hear rap differently than we do. You do know that, right? Especially if he, if he not in the rap at all, he don't know what's going it's on. Just, it's it's, it's kind of like when a, it's similar to when an artist um, wants to sample a record, mm -hmm. and then you know somebody will listen to what they want to do with the music, and they don't approve of the the lyrics, the content. Yeah, the content. So they don't approve all. of the sample. That's what this. That's what this kind of feels like to me. Yeah, but I feel like this is a play with words. It was she. He was. She wasn't disrespecting the law. Right? Yeah, I think he's talking about the rest of the song, mm. the rest of the language that was used in the like the whole record, like right. curse words and whatever else he was saying. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's what that's what I personally believe. I don't know. Okay. Now, also, lastly, most deaf, he uh, responds to people. You know, uh, I think about a week ago, he was talking about Drake and said Drake wasn't hip hop. We have the original post. Like, is Drake hip hop? Why are you doing this to me? Drake is pop to me in the sense like if 
I was in Target in Houston and I heard a Drake song. It feels like a lot of his music is compatible with shopping. Or as or as you know, shopping with an edge. Fair. I like Drake's music, but I understand exactly what you're saying. Well it's likable. Likable music, okay. yeah. We got a lot of backlash oh, for saying that. People were saying shop Drake with an edge, is That is so funny, man. I would love to shop with an edge. What does shopping with an edge mean? <laughs> I want to know what that is. Well, people criticized him a lot for saying that, and they started saying Drake is hip hop, and how this is how he responded to that. I'd like you all to hear what it is that I have to say as it relates to some of the comments that I made about Drake. First of all, I don't hate anyone. My opinion is mine. It's legal. It was not an opportunity to try to slander him or to clown on him. I have reached out to him. I have no response just yet, but I will say this. The young man is very talented. He's been able to be very successful with that talent, and I have no issue with his success or anything that he's been able to achieve as a result of his talent. I do feel that some of the criticism that he's received in the past has been mean-spirited and unfair. I don't want to participate in that. Nonetheless, it's not sacrilegious to have a critique or an opinion of a public figure, particularly one of that magnitude. Uh, Drake is hip hop, and, hip -hop. and, and, and most, most does not have to defend his opinion. If there's one person that has, you know, the right to an opinion about hip hop, it is definitely it's most deaf. Yeah. Okay, that's his opinion. Art is subjective. Who cares what folks say about your opinion? I, 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 I don't like when people, uh, you know, uh, bow, not bow, I don't want to say bow or bend, when people respond to the backlash on social media. Because you have to expect that, right? When you put your opinion out there, it's going to be people that agree with you. It's going to be people that disagree with you. But it's still your opinion, so you got to stand on that. Right, but he didn't, he didn't take the comment back. He, he didn't say Drake is not hip-hop or Drake is hip-hop. Right. Feel, he feels the same way. He was just saying that his comments doesn't come from hate. Uh, doesn't come from a place where he's saying Drake is not talented. He just doesn't... His form of hip-hop, he doesn't believe Drake fits in. I'm just mad that Target or somebody hasn't, you know, hired Drake to do some commercials, <laughs> you know, for people who like to shop, shop with an edge. edge. <laughs> okay? That that should be the Super Bowl commercial. Yeah, what is shopping with an edge? I, I don't, don't know, know what that is. But they can show us during the Super Bowl. That'd be like an, a, a great commercial for the Super Bowl. My shopping gosh. with an edge. Mm -mm -mm. You know? All right. Well. A bunch of people walking around dressed like Kanye. Is dressing like Kanye wearing a black mask with a black leather jacket and black jeans? In, in the summertime is that shopping with an edge that is shopping with an edge <laughs> that is shopping especially where, where that Walmart is or that Target is that's what I'm saying yes All that right. would be a fantastic Super Bowl commercial alright well that is your rumor report now who you giving your donkey to man four after the hour uh, I want to talk about why manners will take you where money won't alright yes we'll get to that next it's the Breakfast Club good morning the Breakfast Club your mornings will never be the same <laughs> Charlemagne. Some donkey today just saw themselves. I've been watching Charlemagne. I was ready for it. I never heard of a donkey the other day. What is it? I'm a donkey. Say it again, Charlemagne. I'm a donkey. Yes. You are a donkey. I'll show you how to act a donkey. Everything that Charlemagne is saying is true. Donkey today for Tuesday, January 30th goes to a Chicago man named Muhammad Workhu. I think I pronounced his name right. Salute to everybody in Chicago. Now, this is a very interesting story to me because a motto that I live by is something my grandmother and mother always told me, and that is, manners will take you where money won't. I believe that wholeheartedly. I think that it costs nothing to be kind, and people will always remember how you made them feel, okay? People will forget things you did. They will forget things you said, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Remember that. Okay, when I tell you this story, I tell all the youngins around me, all my nieces and nephews, when you're working with people, what you want to be said about you when you leave them is that you are a pleasure to work with because once again, manners will take you where money won't. That's right. <clears throat> Bad manners close open doors good manners will make you matter in life your manners open doors that you know your beauty can't open and, and buy you things your money can't, okay? And this brother Muhammad work who clearly believes the same see Muhammad is a bank robber ladies and gentlemen yes I can confidently call him a bank robber because he robbed two banks okay once is a coincidence twice is a pattern and he did it twice but he didn't just do it see he walked into one bank with a note that said pay it back soon 
And then less than 72 hours after he was acquitted of, uh, and this was less than 72 hours after he was acquitted of committing a similar bank robbery, okay? Gather around, let me tell you the story. See, two years ago, Muhammad Warku walked into a local bank and pressed a note against the glass that read, give me the money, please. Thank you. And he left with $595. He was found about a half hour later with about $100 less in the note that said, give me the money, please. Thank you. Still in his possession. Okay. But let me tell you why our court system is flawed. Because in court, work whose attorney argued that even though he committed a crime, it did not amount to robbery because she said robbery involves stealing something by force or intimidation. So his attorney, Mary Judge, claimed there was no implicit or explicit threats of any kind. Who knew you could go into a bank, just be nice, just be polite, and ask for what you want, and you shall receive it? Well, look at this. If you have ever been refused credit or a loan, all you had to do was be nice. If you got a history of mispayments or possible fraudulent activity on your life, don't worry about it. You can still get a loan. Just smile and say, give me all the money, please. Okay. By the way, a jury agreed with his lawyer. <laughs> Work who, who's 31 years old, was released from custody this past Friday. So on Monday afternoon, armed with his new knowledge of the judicial system, empowered by the fact that he didn't do anything wrong because he was nice about it, he then walked into another bank and handed an employee a note that said, please give me the money. I'll pay it back soon. Banker's GIF. Yes, G-I-F-E. I don't know if he was trying to spell give or gift, but he said Banker's GIF, G-I-F-E. Uh, I, I don't know what he meant. <laughs> was it gift to give? Anyway, Banker's GIF me uh, in advance. Well, it worked again. And the bank teller gave work who more than $2,000 and allowed him to walk out before calling the police. First of all, drop on the clues bomb for that bank teller. I'm so glad you didn't try to be a hero because that bank ain't dying for you. Okay, Chase is simply the name of a bank. It is not an action you should do when someone robs one. Okay, just let them walk away. Now, let me continue to explain this story. The teller described work who is wearing a surgical mask, neon green gloves, and a neon green winter cap. Investigators later found surveillance footage of a man wearing, guess what? <laughs> The green hat, the gloves, and buying clothing in a backpack at a nearby Target store. So they arrested him just about half an hour uh, after the alleged robbery with $200 less than what he had been given at the bank. Okay, you know how I know Muhammad doesn't think he's committing any crimes because in both cases, he didn't try to get rid of any evidence. Still wearing the clothes he committed the crime in, still holding on to the note that he used to commit the crime, and now he is set to be charged with both bank robbery and bank theft, which do not require force or intimidation. His lawyer, who got him off initially married judge, says that this is a more appropriate charging decision. In fact, she said because of the jury's not guilty verdict, I believe the government is now charging both bank robbery and bank theft in a case where there is not evidence of force or threat of force. Um, hmm. I think they have to throw the book at the man simply because you have to make an example. Are you going to have a generation of polite, well-mannered crooks, right? Thinking they can get away with crimes simply by saying please and thank you. And that's not how any of this works because here's the thing, people. Judge others on how they act, not what they say. Folks can say anything. Remember what I said earlier. People will forget, you know, uh, what you said, okay? But they won't forget how you made them feel. You have to follow that up with actions if you have manners. And you say please and thank you, but then do something foul. That's not good manners, okay? Having good manners, being polite, helpful, and respectful to others shows you have self-respect. But robbing someone after you say please and thank you shows you do not. Please give Muhammad Warku the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Oh, now you are the donkey <laughs> of the day. You are the donkey of the day. It's kind of like when folks say no disrespect, but. But I think instead of saying no disrespect, you should just be like, please, may I disrespect you? Please, may I please disrespect you? I'll apologize for it later. <laughs> no. That's what it feels like. Mm. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey today. Yes. All right. Now, when we come back, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Shout out to Michael Blackson, comedian. You know, friend to the room. Uh, he put a question out yesterday. He says, is it appropriate for your homie to ask your girlfriend how she is doing? All right, 800-585-1051. In what so, context? Does it matter? Yeah, if you if if, if me and my uh, significant other are together and my homeboy walks up and he gives me a pound, 
And he said, what's up, man? And he turns to my wife and says, yo, how are you? No. That's, that's I, fine. I think he meant on the phone. That's I guess, what I said, checking, what context? Oh, checking up on her. So so that's like your homie reaching out to your girl, your wife, and saying, hey, how you doing? That is the context. Without why, you why involved. Is he, why is he doing that? <laughs> like, is, there, is she sick? Like, was there a car accident? Like, was, 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 did she just have a baby? Like, what is the reason she's doing that? Well, because that can happen on social media, Right. If you know, like, if, if you see mm. your, your homie's significant other on social media and you know something happened, and you send a DM like, yo, you good? Or you see her post something in the story and you reply back, oh, you you doing better? How you feeling? Mm. I'm saying context matters. And it does. needs to know it more does. context. Yeah, it does. 800-585-1051. Because, you know, the first thing you think is like, hell no, my homie shouldn't be reaching out That's to nobody. Y'all, just, y'all insecure. You just jump but, insecure. But when you think about it, like you said, if, if somebody gets into a car crash, you'd be like, hey, just checking up on you. Are you okay? Or if somebody just had a baby, yeah, hey, congratulations. If I saw you, if I, if I see or if I see my homeboy's girl out and about, I'm not going to say, oh, what's up? How are you? Just, right. What? what? Come on, man. I need more context. Well, let's discuss. He didn't give no context? He, he didn't just give no context. That's all he mm. said. That, that was that was his context. That's all he said. Okay. That's all he said. But let's let's have this conversation. 800-585-1051. That's all he said. Is it cool for your homie to hit you up, hit, hit up your girl, and ask her how she's doing? Hit her up, I would assume, on the phone. But let's discuss. 800-585-1051. Would you have a problem with it? It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about something. Uh, shout out to comedian uh, Michael Blackson put on Instagram yesterday. He was talking about, you know, uh, homies shouldn't be checking up on your girl. That is the question. I need more context, mother sucker. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Because it's, it's all about context, right? Because like, if, if I don't, if you, if you, if you, if my, if my, if you and my girl know each other and we cool, do y'all cool? And you, you know she posts something in her story, right? And 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 you know she might have been in an accident or just had a baby, something. And you just ask, "How are you? You good?" That ain't that ain't that don't bother me. I'm, I'm thinking about it, but and nah, it don't bother me because you, you're thinking about. I'm thinking about the, my friends that actually have my wife's number, right? And if they hit her, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Yeah, if I see you in the street, if I see you in the street, you know what I'm saying. I mean, if you see my girl in the street and you say what's up, you're like, how are you? You know what I mean. You, uh, stuff like That's that don't bother me. I gotta know. I gotta know more context of what this checking up is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like I said, it, it like my friends that have my wife's number, I wouldn't mind. Like if they, hey, just checking them on your house every day. I, I, well, if it, 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 it has to be context, because why are you checking up? Is it just out the blue? Is it just Tuesday? Like, hey, I'm checking up on you on a Tuesday. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Yeah. Let's, and then what if you? What if it's your? If it's your wife, right? And it's like your first cousin. And we all cool. Like, yeah, I have a problem with that. I got, I got, that's what I'm saying. I need more context to this 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 question. Hello, who's this? Yo, what's going on? This is Alex. I appreciate y'all for uh, letting me call up here. What up, Alex? Alex, what's up, man? What's your thoughts, brother? Plain and simple, man. I, I hear what uh, Charlemagne is saying. You know, it all depends on the context, but I, I think everybody should keep things cordial. You know, no social media, no hitting each other up if, if I'm not involved. You said no social media, so you don't even want your homies following your, your girl on social media. Nah, see, too much too much can happen. Too, it's too much room to, for stuff to go left. And that's not even being insecure. Yes, it is. I, fi- I figure, that's, I figure that's, that's more so of a respect thing, you know? How, how old are you, brother? About 25. 25. All right, so you, how long you been dating your girl? Mm, we ain't going to get into that, you know, long enough. <laughs> he don't know. Long enough to care. <laughs> long enough, okay. to, care. He long enough to care about my homie hitting up. He don't remember. Hey, man. But, but did she put a lot of... Uh, Bikini pics and, and have naked clothes on, on her Instagram. Her, is that is that how her Instagram looks? Not necessarily. You know, she keep, she keep things pretty uh pretty professional in there, and I applaud it. Very respectful. But uh, at the same time, if she did if she did start doing that, you know, I don't want nobody hitting me up out the blue. Like, you know, yeah. It sounds like a little insecurity, but I get it. All right, brother. Thank I was you. Saying, it just really all depends on context, man. There's a lot involved. Like, he don't even want his homies following his wife, his girl on Instagram, bro. It, it, they might just be his homies. I mean, you just, it, like I said, it's about context. I don't know how close he is to these boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. Hello, who's this? This is D-Boy from Illinois. D-Boy, D-boy from, Illinois. from Illinois. Now, what, what's your thoughts, D-Boy from Illinois? Uh, first, my thought is Charlemagne light skin homie called him and talked to his wife. That's why he hate all the light-skinned people. Never. You know what I mean? Never. Let's get that out the way. But secondly, if you call if you call it your man's girl, you ratting on it. <laughs> if you're calling your man's girl to say, hey, how you doing? You ratting on your partner. 
flatten you. on your partner. All right. Thank you. You're right. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, there's no, as I said, it's about context. Like, I need context. Mello! Yo, what's the word? MV, what's up, Uncle Stoller? What's Peace, up, Mello? Mello. Now, Mello, when you when you, can your significant other call your girl on the Obama phone? Um, wait, hold on. Can my significant other call my girl on the Obama phone? So you almost got me there. You, you almost caught me. I banged that. But I'm not gonna hold you. If you're my man and you're talking to my girl, you are no longer my man. Cause she barely like me. So what's so special about you that she's Hilarious. okay with you hitting her up like Wendy Williams talking about how you doing? Like, no. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> but what happened if something happened? Hey, what happened if she what got into a car here? accident? What happened if she just had a baby and your homie just want to say, yo, congrats. How you just checking up on you? Okay, but why are you telling her that? You're my man, not her man. Like, and on top of that, my, like, my shorty, she from New York. They're the toughest men on earth. Like, they didn't, no. I'm like, no. Why is she hitting you, you back? Why is she feel so comfortable? All right, all right Mello. <laughs> Mello, you and well, Trav. Okay, you and Trav is real cool. What happened if Trav hit your girl? See, now, that's completely different. No, it's and you not. You know why? I'm not about to. You feel me? I'm not about to do that. But it's okay. It's not. Gay men be the biggest snitches <laughs> to your woman. Okay. But at least they not trying to get her. Yeah, but they telling on you in case you, if you doing something that you ain't got no business doing, which you shouldn't I'm be doing anyway. Because black cheat. men don't cheat. There you go, there you Mello. go, Mello. There you I'm go, sorry. Mello. You said it. Clearly. I'm sorry. I don't even know why I insulted you. Said it right, you. Like, Mello. Mello. I'm sorry. Please Thank forgive you. me. Please forgive me, brother. Have a good one, Mello. So good, man. We all make mistakes. That's right. <laughs> Can't believe I accused that black man of cheating, knowing black men don't cheat. And I, I but I did say, you know, hypothetically, because we know black men don't cheat. 800-585-1051. We're asking, would you have a problem with your friends directly checking on your partner? Let's discuss. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're asking, would you have a problem with your friends directly checking on your partner? Now, this conversation comes from Michael Blackson. Michael Blackson put in a post. Is it appropriate for your homie to ask how your girlfriend's doing? So that is the question. Let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? Hey, it's Debbie from Elmont. Hey, Debbie from Elmont, Long Island. What's up? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Now, now, what question? Would, would it be a problem if if you feel like your your man's friend is checking up on you? No, because if it's a problem, I shouldn't be his girl in the first place. I should know how to conduct myself, and so does the friend. Mm. It doesn't have to be a negative situation. Not everybody's a creep out here. <laughs> People are true. genuinely nice. Okay. That's why I keep saying context matters in this situation. And I wonder if Michael Blackson is saying that, you know, the friend checked up and he didn't know the friend checked up. Like mm. if, if the friend checked up and you didn't know the friend checked up and you found out the friend checked up, that's different. Hello, who's this? Hi, um, I don't want to say my name, but good morning. Good okay, morning. Anonymous. What, what's your thoughts, Anonymous? Um, I feel like it's okay only because I'm speaking from experience. Um, my husband and I went through a rough patch one time and his best friend is also my friend, him and his wife. And so he was the only one that knew about the situation that was going on. So, of course, he checked up on my husband, and he also told my husband, I'm going to be checking up on your wife as well because, you know, nobody else knows about the situation but me, so I'm going to check on her and, you know, make sure she's doing all right and check up on both of y'all. And he told my husband that. My husband was fine with it, and he told me that he told my husband that. So, I, you know, that was okay. That's context. different, though. Context matters. He, and he also told your he husband told that your he was husband. calling. Yeah. You know, that's different. He, he went and told your husband, yeah. about, I know what the situation is. I'm going to check up on her. That's different. That's respect. That's, that's, right. that's big respect. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, thank you, Mama. Thank you. Did y'all work it out? Is everything better? Yes, everything is great. All right, amen. Have a good one, Mama. All right, thank you. You too. Penny, good morning, Penny. Hey. How you feeling? Peace, Penny. You know, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm doing... I was born in 1978, so when I think Penny, I think Good Times and Hardaway. No, it's not even Penny. It's Penny, like Penny, like the color. Oh, <laughs> Penny like the color. Penny like the color. Penny, Tan. Oh, Tan. Oh, Tanny. 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 Yeah. Okay, hey, Tanny. <laughs> All right. That's different. Hey. Yes. What, what's your thoughts, mama? So my thoughts is it's totally not ethical for women, for men to reach out to other women and ask them, is they okay? Because that's opening other doors to like kind of size your man up to see if you're accessible or not. And I don't think that it's appropriate. Like sometimes they be trying to slick, act like they cool, just to size your man up or just try to butter you up for when they see the doors open. So I never think that that's okay. No. Nah. Okay. You need to show respect for your man at all times. You can't just be out here just being accessible even to their friend because nah. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Teddy. 
No problem. Have a good day. What's the moral of the uh, of this story? I mean, the moral of the story to me is just that context matters. You know what I mean? Like, that's just a big, broad, general question. Can your man, can your homeboy check up on your woman? Like, I, I, I need more context. Because I think all situations vary. Well, well, all my, my friends that have my wife's number, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I'll be honest with you. I really wouldn't. It's not too many friends that I have that have my wife's number. So, and the ones that do, I know. Those, those are my family family. So, anyway. When we come back, we got your rumor report. We got to tell you about Elon Musk and his brain chip. Yeah, brain chip. We'll talk about it. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. All right. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Elon Musk. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I am gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on the breakfast club. This is where the tea spills, right? Right. right. You know Elon Musk, the owner of Tesla. Now, after years of testing their brain implants on animals, Neuralink, the company, is doing their first test on a human. And Elon Musk, of course, owns the company. Who are the humans? This morning, Elon Musk announcing that for the first time, his company Neuralink has implanted a brain chip in a human. Musk saying the person is recovering well. Initial results show promising neuron spike detection. Neuralink's goal is to help paralysis patients communicate by connecting their brain to a computer. People paralyzed from stroke, from traumatic brain injury, or a spinal cord injury could see the benefits. The FDA approved Neuralink for human tests last May after years of testing on animals. Here's one electrode on one thread that when we stimulate causes a flexion movement of the leg. The company demonstrated the ability of its implants to stimulate movement, allowing a monkey to play a video game. Musk says the first human users will be people who've lost the use of their limbs. But speaking about the long term, he said, imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than a speed typist or auctioneer. That is the goal. I mean, that's amazing technology as we can really help paralyze people or folks who have, you know, uh, problems f- folks who have problems with their limbs yeah that's with their a, that's limbs amazing or technology. people with c- communicating is, it, it, it's dope if it's like you said if it if it works that'll be amazing I just don't want it to make stupid people smart like you know God made dumb people for a reason Okay. I don't know why that uh, you know made silence happen in the room <laughs> you don't think Not, dumb people serve a purpose Nah, but you know if well Yes. Yeah. God know God God know what God doing. I'm telling you, man. Mm-hmm. God made dumb people for a reason. All right. Well now moving on. Jam Master J's murder uh trial begins uh began yesterday actually. Now this murder has been unsolved for twenty two years. Uh there were actually people in the room where he was murdered and now after twenty two years those individuals are starting to say what actually happened that night. The 20 years after his death, the trial's finally begun for the two men charged with the murder of Run DMC's Jam Master J. Opening statements took place this morning in Brooklyn Federal Court. Lisa Evers was inside the courtroom and she joins us live from downtown Brooklyn with what we learned on day one. Lisa. Friends, fans, and supporters of Jam Master J showed up at Brooklyn Federal Court for day one of the long-awaited trial. Carl Jordan Jr. and his co-defendant Ronald Washington are each charged with two murder counts, one in connection with drug trafficking, the other for using a Gun. In the prosecution's opening statement, AUSA Miranda Gonzalez told the jury it was a deadly ambush of Jason Mizell mm. on October 30th, 2002, by Carl Jordan Jr., seen in this court sketch in a striped tie and vest on the left, and Ronald Washington on the right. The motive? Revenge over a drug deal gone bad. Mm. That heinous act is eating them alive. Mm-hmm. Spirit of Jam Master J probably haunting the hell out of them. Mm-hmm. Mm, All right. Well, that is your rumor report. And, and I want to tell everybody, did we tell everybody that Jess Hilarious starts uh, next Monday, yes, February 5th? Yes, we did. Okay. All morning long. Yeah. Right. Uh, just salute to Jess Hilarious. If you, if you haven't heard, yes, yeah, she is announced. She is the third co-host of The Breakfast Club, and she begins next Monday, February 5th. We're super duper excited. So salute to uh, Jess Hilarious. Yeah, we announced it yesterday. You know what's interesting uh, about the rollout we did for Jess Hilarious? What's if you that? saw, for, for those who saw uh, the video on social media, um, the majority of those people you know from the 
the YouTubers and the podcasters mm-hmm. and everybody else who had a theory yep. and was spreading false information about what they heard and, Fake what, news. So, and what sources tell them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most of them lie to y'all like that all the time about everything. Yeah, okay? of course. But y'all don't care because nobody cares about the truth and the lie is more entertaining. But uh, those lies are not sustainable. Okay, you can't mm-hmm. build a solid platform of real credibility off lies. Eventually, that house of cards will fall. But mm-hmm. you will learn that on your own. That's okay? right. And it wasn't everybody that was in the video. You know, salute the... Uh, Claudia Jordan and um, uh, Al Reynolds. The reason we used them at the very end, at the end was because that was the reveal. And they were the only people that I heard who got it right. Yeah, they said, yeah. <laughs> you know? Sounds like a hoax. It sounds like it a was. stunt. Yeah, stunt, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's uh, a salute to them. Yeah, but you know, it is scary because so many people believed in, in what people were saying and, and they had no clue. There was no sources. There was nothing. They were just making stories up, which... It's, oh, that's it's not very scary. That's it's, just, scary. It's, it's just human nature. People believe it because you know this was not as serious. But just just imagine something else that's more serious that's, yeah, that's going to be but, happening but, in the next but, but, couple but, of months. You but know? it's not scary. It's just human nature. And when you live in uh, the 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 era that we in, where everybody has a platform, folks is really just looking for content. That's it. Like yeah, that's but all they're, they're looking they got for. Content can can hurt got, other people's lives. Uh, nobody cares about the truth and the lies. More entertaining. By the way, it's always been like this. Tabloids and everything have always existed. There's always been rumors and gossip. The difference Never was like this, though. the difference was the people that spread the rumors and mm-hmm. spread the gossip. We knew it was rumors and gossip. Correct. Now these people get on these platforms and speak, uh, you know, with zero knowledge about things with mm-hmm. extreme confidence. Confidence, <laughs> like a mother. Okay? Yes. And they think their feelings are facts. Mm -hmm. But as I always tell y'all, your feelings are not facts. Mm -hmm. Your feelings about something are not facts. If people would just say, yo, this is a rumor, this is gossip, you know, I I don't know, I really don't know what I'm talking about, but this is what I think. Correct. It'd be totally different. I agree. But they don't do that. No. No. All right. Well. But Jess Hilarious starts Monday. February 5th. February 5th. That's a fact. That was funny yesterday too, even watching people, (laughs) even watching people try to act like that wasn't always the case. What you mean? Because everybody made up all these scenarios in their mind, mm-hmm. but no, she was always supposed to start February 5th, but yeah. there was people saying things like, oh, that's probably because uh, they tried to back out and it, was a bre- and it was a breach of contract and they had to acknowledge it. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up already! At what point do you just admit you're loud and wrong all the time? They won't. Shut up! They won't. They gotta, shut up. They got to go with it. They got to keep shut going. Shut up. They no, you, keep you really don't. They got to keep going. You'd, get, you'd gain more respect if you just admitted I was wrong. We no, were wrong. They got to keep we going. We don't know what the hell we'd be talking about. No, they got to keep going. But you're entertained, aren't you? I was. I was highly entertained. I was, too. I, I totally understand why the military has psychological operations. But what y'all don't know is we do stuff like that all the time. Okay, one day I'm going to write a book about all the social... Let me shut up. I'm just gonna shut up right now. <laughs> just one spit, day, spit all the one day I'm gonna write a book about all the different social experiments that we've done to try to find out. He's covering his okay. mouth. So he doesn't spit anymore. No, I'm just saying. One day, one day, one day, one day, one one day. day. a long, long, long time from now, y'all gonna be like, "What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That too? That and, too. That? And, and that? And that? Yeah. And that? And yeah. that? Yes. 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 All right. All right. Okay. Well, People's Choice mixes up next. Get your request. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Uh, I want to say again, salute to Jess Hilarious. She is officially our third co-host. Yes, she starts uh, next Monday, February the fifth, man. That's right. Yes, you know it was a long, tedious process mm-hmm. last year. That's right. Rotating all the different guest hosts. Um, but there's a story behind all of that, though. It's just, it's just, it's, it is incredible how God works. I've known Jess for about a decade now. Mm-hmm. And it is just very, very interesting how God works. I'll say that. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll yeah. talk about it. We'll talk about it one day. But she'll start next Monday. That's right. Next Monday, February 5th, Jess Hilarious officially joins the Breakfast Club. That's right. All right, and when we come back, we got the positive notice, the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time to get up out of here. You guys have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Charlamagne, you got a positive note? I do, man. It's simple, and it's about the truth. Uh, always remember, the truth cannot be deceptive, and one who sees it cannot be deceived. Remember that. Have a great day. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?